Um, did you bring Florida sunshine with you? <laughs> well, it's not as cold here as it is in Maine, is it? Okay, okay. We come, we come from many places. If we spend enough time together, we'll find that we believe things in a slightly different way. But we believe in the same Jesus Christ, yes? Yes. We believe in the one God who is creator. We say that we believe in the Holy Spirit, the power, the power of resurrection. And so let's not let the little things divide us, but let's allow all those little things that seek to divide us to bring us together as God created the heavens and the earth, as Jesus took all of our sin suffered and died to prove that the power that the power of the Holy Spirit has the ability to put all things back together again that's my hope for you my hope for us that's my hope for this planet called earth now I want to do things just a little different this morning I would like for you to turn with me to page 35 in your hymnal. We're going to do the Apostles' Creed, but we're going to do it, we're going to do it in a question response as we do at our baptism. So I invite you to stand with me, please. So let me tell you why I'm doing this. I know that not everybody was at Sunday school this morning. I want to invite you to come to Sunday school. Uh, I tell you, there's not a Sunday that goes by that I do not learn from those who I, whom I'm in class with. Every Sunday morning, I walk away edified for having been in Sunday school. But this morning, this morning's text, uh, uh, Jesus said, look, this is Sunday school, look, or lo, I am, say I am. I am. I am with you. I am with you. Always. Always. Now, when Jesus says I am, he's talking about the Apostles' Creed. When Jesus says I am, the great I am, we know God is Father, the creators of the heaven and the earth. We're about to talk about that. We know, we know God as the Son, Jesus Christ. That was God incarnate hanging on that cross that was resurrected on Sunday morning. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that that took place, church. Look, I am with you always. Do you believe in God the Father? Now hang on a minute. The Apostle Paul told the church at Rome, you have no excuse, whoever you are, for saying that you do not know God, for God has revealed himself in creation from the beginning. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. You said you, we said that we believe in Jesus Christ. My friends, he came to give us life and to give it to us abundantly. When we see him, shall we know him and shall he know us as the living, not the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit?
resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Now you tell me, church, is there anything in all of creation, is there anything on earth and in this world that looks like sin and death, is there anything in all of the cosmos and all of life that God does not have covered by his mercy, by his grace, and by his love? And so now let us enter into that by belief that is transformed into faith that what God has said is absolute truth. And may that absolute truth so overwhelm us that we live by hope and bring God's kingdom from heaven to earth just as Jesus did. Amen. And you may be seated. Would you join me in prayer, please? Father, I don't know every heart and I don't know every mind, but you do. I haven't heard all of this roll off the lips of the individual who's suffering. But I trust, O oh God, that you know and that you move. I give you thanks for Bill Cole. Father, I give thanks that while we all thought that he was at home recuperating, he was still in the hospital. It seems odd, Father, to give thanks that somebody's in the hospital. But I give thanks that this bleeder that he had in his esophagus that evidently you knew more than any of us knew. And so I give you thanks and I give you praise. May we all honor and glorify your holy name that you've tended to your servant Bill. You've given him a new knee so that he can rise as a lame man to walk as a new man. But I give you thanks that while he was losing blood, you gave the doctors the good sense to stop the flow of blood. I hear through the rumor mill, oh God, that, that maybe Patty needs to have a, her carotid arteries looked at. And so there it is again, someone among us. Father, did you not call and equip each of your disciples to go into the world and to heal? And Father, what's more healing than a touch, a hug, recognition, to sit with a person, to abide with the person, knowing that you can't, ah, oh, Father, we can't clean out an artery. But we can come and we can offer life. I give you thanks, Father, for this congregation. I give you thanks that this poor preacher got to see the work of a whole church on Easter Sunday. I got to see a humble little man named Jackson that in so many ways just showed up with his family trying to do everything that all of the people of this congregation has tried to teach him. Father, I give you thanks that as our families are spread all over this nation and all over this country, that somehow we're connected together by something far stronger more powerful than a social network like Facebook or Twitter. But yet, that those social medias ride the waves of the air in the same way that the power of prayer connects us not only to you, but connects us one to another. This morning, Father, might we be able to consider that your kingdom does come and that it has already come. That you, O oh God, King of kings, 
Lord of Lords, chose to come to this place called earth. But you didn't come and stay. You didn't get stuck and you didn't get lost. You came for a purpose. You came to redeem all things and to make all things new. Father, I guess what I'm asking this morning, and all of the voices that compete for our hearts, minds, and souls, including mine, might we have the unction and the good sense to listen to your voice and to your voice alone. And I ask that we might humble ourselves, especially this poor preacher, that I might humble myself for all this education and all of this knowledge and all of this willingness and wanting to share facts and figures and this and that and opinions. And God, you know I have a lot of opinions. I ask that my opinions would never be more important than walking with one of my brothers and sisters to the place that they could hear your still, small voice whispering in the depths of their individual souls that they might know that they're loved unconditionally. Father, you show up in so many ways. We behold you in all of creation. May we see your abundance. And might we see the abundance even as we wipe the pollen off of our windshields May we know that's how abundant that you are. May we see that same abundance in your mercy as we encounter not only our individual sin, but the sin of our neighbor. Might we remember Christ and his mercy. Come, Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us. For we are a people who love darkness. We love our own opinions. But may we learn to call you ruler and king of life here on earth, of all of our thoughts and all of our feelings. As you take us from a place called earth to unite us in heaven with you, and until all of that's done, might we be willing participants of your kingdom here and now. We pray these things in the hope that our one voice lifted together in prayer might join our hearts and minds together with you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.